Let's talk about this one. We have cos x over 1 minus sin x. However, before I show you guys the right way to do this, let me show you guys a common mistake. So this is just going to be incorrect, right? This is a wrong way to do it. Well, if you look at this right here, yes, we do have a cos x on the top. And we have two things on the bottom, namely the 1, and then we subtract the second one is the sin x, right? If you just go ahead and put down cos x and then over this 1, and then you put down the minus in between, and then you still put down the cos x right here, and then over the sin x right here. And if you do it this way, you will end up with cos x over 1, which is just cos x, and then the minus still minus, and cos over sin, we know that's cotangent, and we have the x as the input. Well, this is incorrect. And the reason is because when we have two terms on the bottom, we cannot split the fraction like the following, okay? So do not do it like this. And with this being said, you see that choice B is the wrong answer, right? This is the wrong answer for it. So let's get rid of that. And now, of course, I will have to show you guys the right way. But as we can see, this expression here is in terms of sine and cosine already. So in that case, what can we do though? Well, look at this is 1 minus sine to the first power x. This looks similar to one of the things that we know. And let me put that down for you guys. This is what we know, all right? We know that when we have 1 and the minus sine to the second power x, this right here, we do have a nice identity for this. This is the same as cosine squared x, isn't it? As you can see, this is just sine to the first power, but this is sine to the second power. But if you look at this right here, 1 minus sine squared x. If you would like, this is the same as 1 squared minus sine squared x. This is technically a difference of two squares. Namely, we can factor this out. If we do that, you will end up with, this is 1 minus sine x, and then we times by 1 plus sine x when you factor out the difference of two squares. Well, if you come back here again, we have the 1 minus sine x already, which is this. If I multiply this bottom by 1 plus sine x, well, we can produce 1 minus sine squared x, and in that case, we can produce cosine squared x, and we can go from there, right? So let me write this down again, cosine x on the top over 1 minus sine x, and what we'll do is we multiply the bottom by 1 plus sine x. And this right here is called the conjugate of that. So this was a minus. We just changed this to plus, right? And you can imagine, if this was a plus, we will change this to a minus. Anyways, right here, I'll just multiply the bottom by this and also do the same on the top. 1 plus sine x, like that. And we'll continue from here. Well, this times that is exactly 1 minus sine squared x. And we can put that down right here depending on how much work that you would show right here, all right? If you would like to show all the steps again, you can say this is equal to, uh, let me just write this down, this is 1 minus sine squared x, which is the same as just cosine squared x. But we did that right here already. Anyways, right here on the bottom, we just have the cosine squared x. And for the top, I am not going to distribute the cosine x into the parentheses because I have the cosine squared on the bottom already. Let me just keep it as how it is. This is cosine x times 1 plus sine x. And the reason for me to keep it this way is because, remember, this means what? This means cosine x times cosine x. We can cancel out this cosine x with one of the cosine x on the bottom, right? So in another word, we will just have 1 plus sine x on the top all over cosine x, like this. Well, we did a lot of work already, we go back to the answer choices, and you see that this right here is exactly the same as answer choice A, so we can be done right here already. So this right here will be the answer, right? That's it. However, I do want to make a one last remark. It's possible for us to continue, but we stopped it right here because this was in choice A already, right? So, if you want to continue, 
just in case if this wasn't one of the answer choices. What we can do right here is that we only have one term on the bottom, we have two terms on the top. In this case, we can split the fraction. So this is the same as 1 over cosine x, and then plus, and then we have the sine x over this denominator cosine x. This right here is correct, okay? This is okay for us to do. Earlier, when we have two terms on the bottom, we cannot split the fraction. But this right here was okay. If you continue, you see this is secant x, and we add it with sine x over cosine x. This is tangent x. But this is not one of the answer choices. Choice C, right here, this is secant x times tangent x. This is so different than this one, right? So the deal is, whenever you are doing these kind of things right here, as long as you can see one of the answer choices is what you have, you can stop and that will be the answer. If not, you may possibly have to do more work such as this. But this is not one of the answer choices, so this is not the answer. It could have been the answer if this right here was maybe C, but that's a plus. But I cannot give you two answers in one question, right? So anyways, this is it.